I'm Frank Barry. I'm a writer at Bloomberg Opinion, and I'll be taking this RV across the country on a drive from New York to San Francisco following the Lincoln Highway, which is America's oldest transcontinental route that runs from New York to San Francisco. And along the way, it hits a number of major cities, but it also hits tons of small towns. All along the journey in every town that we've gone to and virtually every person that I've spoken with, I've asked the same question. Amidst all the divisions that we see today around politics and race and culture and religion, what is it that binds us together as Americans? What holds us together as a country? This week, the road brought us through Trenton, New Jersey, where I met with the organizer of a graffiti festival. I talked with him about some of the work that he's done to create a community of artists. The good thing about here is everybody has like a common thing. We might not have the same political beliefs, we might not have the same backgrounds, you know, but everybody likes art. As a country, that's one of the things that we kind of have to figure out is what the common ground is. From there, we drove south to Philadelphia, where I talked with the leader of a band called Low Cut Connie, which has become a streaming sensation in the age of COVID. What are the things that really worry me about America and, and where we're headed? I worry that in this country, we don't realize the good that we have. And if you don't realize the good that you have, you can lose it. We should keep being ambitious. We should keep reaching. We need to be proud of the good things that we have in the art that we create in this country. From Philadelphia, we drove west to Lancaster, Pennsylvania, and the night that we were there, there happened to be a police shooting of a 27-year-old man that led to protests downtown, and tear gas was fired by the police, rubber bullets were fired, and windows were smashed in at the police station and in some local businesses. I spoke with some of the protesters the next morning about their experience on the scene and some of the anger that they were feeling towards the police and around issues of race. Honestly, Bo, what, what did they expect from an angry, from an angry city? You know, we countless and countless times they've been telling us, yeah, keep your peaceful, keep your peacefulness. We keep our peacefulness and then the radical ones come out after yeah. that. Once the once we once we get town, peaceful, that's what everybody exactly. forgets. Once we stay here, peaceful we know and you don't give us what here. we want, the radical people are gonna yeah. come out and they're not gonna yeah. listen to us. From Lancaster, we drove west to York, Pennsylvania, and I sat down with the retired pastor of First Presbyterian Church, which was only one of three Presbyterian churches in the country to integrate with a black community in the 1960s. We believe that our diversity is a strength, not a weakness. And even though there may be individuals who may not hold to that, I think the majority of Americans do. A little bit west of York is Gettysburg, and I spent an afternoon walking the battlefield with Peter Carmichael, who runs the Civil War Institute at Gettysburg College. At this place, in July of 1863, that there are countless examples of compassion. Compassion that was showing not just Union soldiers toward Union soldiers, Confederate soldiers toward Confederate soldiers, that there was moments of, of true human decency, of ensuring that men did not suffer needlessly. A, a recognition of, of a common humanity. The Flight 93 National Memorial in Shanksville, Pennsylvania was a moving experience and a beautiful tribute to those who were killed. One of the things I had forgotten about was the passengers in their final moments took a vote about whether to storm the cockpit. And I thought that was especially powerful, having just come from the Gettysburg battlefield, which after all was a battle over the future of democracy. And Lincoln would speak those eloquent words that would carry on through the centuries about government of the people, by the people, for the people. And here was uh, a living manifestation of American democracy. All across Ohio, we saw so many lawn signs, and the vast majority of them were for President Trump. They were so frequent that they just became part of the landscape. In central Ohio, I spent a morning with a farmer who was a former chairman of the local Republican Party, but he became an independent. I worry about unity uh, for our people. Outside of this era of Trump, where we're talking about division, derision, and consternation all across the news and all across our nation. We're gonna to come together as a people. We are a good people. We deserve that for ourselves. 
We're going to be unified. I'm confident of it. In Indiana, the Lincoln Highway runs through South Bend, and I spoke with the president of the University of Notre Dame, Father John Jenkins, about the role of religion in politics. And this was just uh, a day or two before Amy Coney Barrett, who is a professor at the Notre Dame Law School, was nominated to the Supreme Court. Unless we can recover some sense of community and some sense of shared values on the basis of which we can make decisions, then I I think it's, it's very tough to have a democracy that's vibrant and that serves people's needs. Along the Lincoln Highway in South Bend is also Northern Indiana's only abortion clinic. I'm a volunteer here in South Bend uh, for Whole Woman's Health Alliance, a nonprofit abortion provider for first trimester abortions. What this moment feels like to me is the last terrified gasping grasp of a fear-based group longing for some kind of nationalistic past. I just think there's so many more people who see a more unified, shared vision. In Chicago, Lincoln's all around. There's Lincoln Avenue, Lincoln Park. But what about Lincoln's spirit? Well, I walked the main drag of a community called Little Village with Zeke Flores, who is the son of immigrants. And I spoke with him about his experience building a successful business and about the state of the American dream. Doing business across the world made me realize that we live in such a special country where we can do anything that we want to do. We ended up at Wrigley Field, and even though the Cubs were playing an away game, Wrigleyville was pretty empty, and it was a little eerie to have the Cubs on a big screen and nobody there. But maybe it was just as well. The Cubs lost, and we headed off for Iowa. As we pulled into Cedar Rapids, Iowa, the destruction from the August windstorm called the derecho was all around us. There were tree limbs and branches and trunks piled all along the streets in front of Mayor Brad Hart's house. They were piled 10 feet tall. When there is a crisis, we really generally stand up and stand together, help our neighbors, do whatever we can to, to help people get back on their feet. I think that that spirit is alive and well in Cedar Rapids. I think it's alive and well in the Midwest. And I think if I lived uh, on either coast, I would see the, those signs there too. In Omaha, we took a detour off the Lincoln Highway to go to Lincoln, Nebraska, because how could we not? It's the capital of the state and Nebraska has a unique system of electing people through a nonpartisan system and governing in a nonpartisan system. In Nebraska, we passed the trail marks for the old Oregon Trail, huge ruts in the ground where the wagons once rolled through carrying settlers out west. And it was really incredible to see them still there and to look back over the hill and to see the train in the distance. Further beyond that, to see Route 80, the interstate, and in between them to see the old Lincoln Highway, four generations of transportation all running through the same piece of land. Before we left town, we also stopped into Honest Abe's Burgers because how could we not? Fort Collins, Colorado is booming. Its population has nearly doubled over the past few decades. And I spoke with the mayor, Wade Troxell. You know, during this time of COVID and, and the social unrest and the economic uh, impacts in our community and, and having fires here in Northern Colorado, we need to come together and, and we need to be a community. The next morning when I stepped out of the RV, the sky was dark and the smell of smoke was overpowering from the wildfires that have burned there since August. As it happens, my next meeting was with Brian Wilson, who runs the Colorado State University Energy Institute. Behind me, you would normally see the beautiful Colorado mountains. Uh, instead, our air quality today is worse than it is in, in New Delhi, India. Our forests are burning here, they're burning in California. We're seeing displacement um, related to a warming climate. Between the wildfires in Colorado and the derecho in Iowa, it was really impossible not to feel the immediacy, the urgency of climate change on this leg of the trip. Well, we've reached California and we're within striking distance of San Francisco, the end of the line for the old Lincoln Highway. I've heard lots of interesting answers touching on similar themes, especially around freedom and democracy. It holds us together um, as a people is our, is our American spirit. Love. We are all hope. human. Just hope. At the end of the day, exactly. hope that we, that we might get to a better tomorrow. On the whole, people want to do what's right. The social contract that we have with one another. Uh, we live in a democracy, we live in a republic. The Constitution, and that's obviously our framework. There's tons and tons of good people. The 
melt, melting pot of everything is what binds everybody together. Without trying to be political about it, I think you, you do go back to the Constitution. We do have the freedom to voice our opinions. We are different and we, we come from many places and we have we all have different backgrounds. And that kind of diversity of our communities makes the larger community. It's that we honestly believe that there can be a better future if, if we choose to do what's necessary to have it. In a frontier mentality, whether it was um, uh, coming to the, uh, to the US or whether it was uh, wagon trains, uh, people had to work together to, to survive. Uh, and I think that's the moment that we're in. We have always been a people who have pushed into new territory, new ideas, new lands. And in order to do that, we have needed to work together. We've needed to lean on one another. That idea of needing one another's help is something that is a theme that I heard run throughout my conversations across the country and the divisions that we face, how that is getting in the way of helping one another, of solving problems. Those two ideas really tied the trip together in the sense that so much of who we are as a people, our national character, is tied up in helping one another and working together. And yet right now we seem to be at a moment where that is harder than ever, where people are having uh, trouble to communicate with others who disagree and as a result to help one another. And we find ourselves more isolated and more angry with other people who perhaps believe different things than we do and see the country and its politics differently than we do.